one thing we knew when we went to Tanzania was that it was going to be an adventure and nothing more kind of like a to define that adventure by the travel that we had to do as we drove around dusty roads, bumpy roads between villages and, and schools. I don't think anything quite prepared me for the colour and for the life that you'd see by the roadside. Wow, the schools were a completely different experience once again. So when we first walked in, you could just see how different it is compared to back here. The equipment was absolutely minimal. At the front, they'd have a blackboard. Just Then they'd just have chairs, no cabinets, no anything really. It was just a structure of the roof on top that you could see with a blackboard at the front and some chairs. But one thing you did get from this was, although they have minimal equipment, when you walked into that class, if you didn't have a chair, they would stand up and give you your chair. And they would, at one point there was three people sharing a chair just so that us visitors could have a chair to ourselves. I think that all taught us as well that we, we need to share the things that we've got. You know, we have a lot more and we can share a lot more, yet we don't. And so when we came back, that was something that I tried to teach myself to share what I have because I do have a lot, a lot more than these people do out here. Uh, so it's day three and it's the day we've left the school we first got to yesterday. Uh, so we had to be there by eight, so we had to get up really early, have breakfast and go just something light because we had breakfast during the day. Uh, so we got there, had to go to two classes, and I went to Swahili, which was very hard, obviously, as they spoke just in Swahili. So the hospitality in a lot of the places, even in the homes of some individuals, they were so welcoming to us. We actually didn't feel like we came from a different country, but we were part of their own community. And obviously, in, their, in Tanzania, they wash the hands of the people that come and the hospitality with that was actually the service that we felt like part of them. We didn't feel like outsiders. Uh, the food, it was very different to our own, that's really what I can say. So where we use so much stuff which they don't actually have. So it makes me appreciate a lot more what we have here such as stock supermarkets where we can go and buy something rather than just actually having to make it ourselves or actually go and having to plant and harvest our own food. So today in the morning we went to a church service which was about three hours long and consisted of pure Swahili so we couldn't understand what they were saying. But the great thing about that was the choir because they were singing for eight minutes straight and dancing which is something you don't get in the UK. Another thing that was quite interesting about that was us having to sing our own song. Shine Jesus Shine went down very well with the Tanzanian crowd. <laughs> it was the church was basically surrounded by uh, a thanksgiving for, so one story was a woman was sick but they prayed thanks to God for her getting better. So she was in hospital and now she was out and at the church service which was quite good. And then after the church service we had lunch with some of the students and we also got emotionally attached to a chicken named Kevin. So Helen got given a chicken as a gift and myself, Rissa and Shana decided to name him Kevin Ferdinand. Kevin Ferdinand Chicken, KFC. There's also a second one. Second one? There's two chickens? Yes. There's two chickens apparently. It was Kevin Ferdinand the second. Tony, Tony Ferdinand? Tony Ferdinand? Kevin! You said Tony! I said Kevin! Okay, Kevin Ferdinand the second then. That's good. And then we had a little break in the middle of the day where we went back to the Bishop's compound. And then in the evening, well, late afternoon and evening, we met up with the students we're going to be spending time on the cot to come with and we went to the Stations of the Cross Walk which was in Kibanga. So the walk is actually called Njia Ya Musalaba which is the way of the cross in Swahili and it was it consisted of 15 crosses going up a large hill which was a great time for us to bond and work together as a team and meet the new students that we're going to be spending the next couple of days with. So each, each of the crosses symbolised the moment in Jesus' life leading from his death to his resurrection which was quite interesting to see like first hand. And what was interesting for me is 
They also have they also have a lot of their hydroelectric power running through there. So that is where the local towns get most of their electricity from, which was good to see. And then in the evening we had another chilled chilled evening with a meal and Helen got us some Nutella which definitely brightened everyone's mood after a long day of walking. <laughs> Put on the shell. <laughs> Put on the shell. And then we're gonna go right. to the random hip shaky one. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. And then back to Oh uh, yeah, dig the road, that one. Dig the road. Ah, uh, definitely dig the road. You pulled the shoulder out, she said. Yeah. There we go, that's it. Hey. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> so today was day seven of our trip and today we visited um, Nyasha Secondary School for the second time which was really good, it was a lot nicer than it was yesterday. Um, so firstly we went into two of their lessons and observed, um, so I went into English and maths, which is actually really good. They they just loved school. It was great. Um, and then um, the school put on a debate about poverty. So we all joined in with that and spoke about how there's different types of poverty in the UK and different types in Africa. All right. So we are here at Nyasha Secondary School, and this is the. Uh, parade ground outside uh, where the students will uh, congregate first thing in the morning and have their assembly and find out what's going on. Over here if we look down we can see different school blocks. We have the this classroom here and then there's an administration block down the end. If we've got in here at the moment we've got a lesson going on, a descriptive English lesson. With Miss Wellington. And this here, out here, is the parade ground. Oh, and here's Nixon. Nixon! You are taking? Yeah, I'm videoing. How are you? I'm doing fine. Yeah. How is it? How has the trip been so far, Nixon? Very self and very amazing. Yeah, have you been have you been pleased with what's happened? I've been pleased with what has been said. And if, is there anything you'd like to say to to uh, Mick or Leo or Vicky? I would like to greet them um, and I'm happy with their greetings. Yeah. I hope one day we will meet with them once again. I can come, I can come in the Austin Sakhatim to them. Yeah. yeah, we would love to host you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we split into groups, some of us went and helped Miss Wellington do English lessons like teaching English and then some of us did sports so football around us um, which is really nice, the students really enjoyed it. So what's going on here Mr Piss? So we're just working on their first touch, their touch and control on this sandy beach of a football pitch. <laughs> uh, we got Chris Green helping out and he's been in for absolutely ages yeah, yeah. but he's having a rest at the moment. Aren't they good? Is that because of his superior skills or because his skills are lacking? The ball's the wrong shape for him. The ball's the wrong shape for him. So Kabanga Primary School was a, um, a primary school of the local children in the area but mixed with the um, albino and disabled children um, who were being looked after um, so they felt part of the community and they, they didn't feel excluded um, but they also had lessons specifically for the disabled children where they held uh, classes where they taught the children braille so they could actually read um, uh, sign language classes for the children who were deaf um, and the children communicated to each other as well. Uh, it was very difficult seeing all the children and learning why they were actually there and what protection they needed from certain tribes uh, in Tanzania. Um, but it was nice to know how much they were being looked after and cared for um, by the people uh, at the school. Uh, you see them actually uh, playing with one of our phones and they found it so amazing how we had this technology and that what it was, because obviously they've never seen this before, and just a smile on his face to see something new, it was amazing. And obviously we sat in, and in this photo it was, we are in a class for blind children, and the uh, teacher, he was so passionate about what he was teaching for the blind kids that actually it was emotional. 
because actually he had so little to use for these kids, but he put everything he could. Right, so uh, Miss Morley. Yeah. Um, so what, what are you guys doing? So at the moment we're just looking at uh, reactions. So when they're, they're trying to throw the ball down different heights on the floor, trying to catch it and just looking at footwork. So making sure that we don't step more than one stone when they catch the ball. Um, and then what we're going to move on to is we're going to look at some running into space and some small game stuff, I think, uh, before playing a proper game of netball. We'll probably do um, our girls this is theirs as well, just to see what the differences are. Okay, stop! The Maneuver Girls School, which is a private school for girls, and we just stayed there and we ate there, which was very, uh, very nice food. And then we also played rounders and taught them rounders, as well as leaving them some kit to play with. Uh, after that, we came back to the Pastoral Centre and just I uh, believe we talked about um, just each other's families uh, and then ate, played games together and then we went to bed. So that was the day. Okay, next one. So how's it going Miss Morley? Oh uh, yeah, um, they, um, it's the first time they've ever done it. So it's quite interesting, but it's not going too bad. Oh, ouch. That, that was good field in there. So yeah, so it. So they can all throw and catch really well. I have noticed that. Yeah. And they're incredibly quick as well. So we're up here today at uh, Bishop Mackay School. It's not opened yet. It's hopefully going to be built, um, opened in, in January. And we're here today. This is where we were, team were, uh, two or three years ago and we're involved in building this You see the of smoke coming back because I'm stood right next to a bonfire because our job today is to clear this side of the road here. Harry, what's it like? Hard work? Yeah, there's a smoke cloud behind you. But... But is, it, is, it, is it good fun to do something uh, a bit practical? Or? Yeah, it's like gardening. Love gardening. Love a little cheeky bit of gardening? Reese, how's it going? Quality. Quality. Chloe, you, you've been slashing much? A little bit. <laughs> Excellent. There we go. We're doing all right. Got a fair bit to go. Uh, small sports day um, with events including bouncing our bottle on our head and walking across in a relay sort of fashion, which was very difficult. The sports again were one of my favourite things whilst we were out there. Uh, there's several images of me showing off my, my volleyball skills. Uh, they got you totally involved with it, as well as we did as well. And I think this was, there was kind of mutual ground between it because language wasn't a problem then. Everyone knew how to kick a football. And so it was something, you could communicate with them without talking. You could just play a game of football and you'd know what you'd be doing, you'd be passing to each other as if you were back home playing for my football team. On the cultural exchange, we got paired up with a student from a different school in Tanzania, well in the area we were staying. And this was my best part of the trip by far because I got paired up with a boy called Aaron. He was, I believe he was 19 years old. So at the time, he was a few years older than me, but we had so much in common that he made my stay just, I, it couldn't have been any better. And one of the best parts was going to the students' houses. And the first house we went to was Chris Green's friend's house, which was possible. And uh, as you can see, there's some pictures where we just sat down playing drafts on a board that was drawn on with some bottle tops. And you can see the smiles on our faces and what that actually meant right in that moment. And that was just so enjoyable and fun, whereas back here you might do that and you wouldn't get the same response. And it just showed what, what we like over here and 
what was different over there and what you could enjoy out there which you wouldn't necessarily enjoy as much at home. And then in another image you can see we are around Aaron's house. Again, they were washing our hands. This is a very big thing there. Is This kind of shows service as well as respect for who you're washing your hands. And when we first got there, we were all surprised about it, but at the end, we were just doing it back to them as if it was nothing. And it was kind of a lesson then to serve everyone at the end of the day. They served us when they didn't know us, and so at the end, we did it back to them the maize mill in which Aaron, my friend, worked in with his dad and there was a story about this actually. When he was younger he got his finger caught in one of the machines and it was so badly infected that they actually had to amputate it. And again this just went to show that things are so different out there, you know. They was, they're still using machinery, they don't necessarily know how to use it as well as we do and that's why he got this injury because he put his finger inside of something that essentially just crushed it. Whereas over here, you don't get that thing happening as much. And to go to that place where that happened a few years ago was truly amazing. So today we've been at uh, the Matiazo uh, Children's Home. And it's home for children whose um, mothers have maybe died in childbirth or have experienced um, kind of a, a, an early pregnancy and didn't want to do with the child. So. Some children are just kind of left by the roadside or in the, the in the streets. So this place here takes those children in and looks after them and, and cares for them. And it's possibly one of the most hopeful, loving places I think I've been. Uh, you know, when you know in Corinthians it talks in Corinthians 13, it kind of gives you a great passage about love. And at the end it says faith, hope, and love. These three things, and you know, those things are the most important but the greatest of those is love and, and that's what this place represents. It represents the faith that they have in God, you know, the hope that they have for these children and the love for them is just amazing. So we, we wanted to support them in their work, so we left it. But it is a truly outstanding place and supported by some truly wonderful people. Do you agree, Efren? Yes, and I would like to, to thank you so much for the support you have made a contribution to this orphanage home. Really, it has touched our heart. Thank you so much. May God bless you abundantly. Cheers, my friend. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> when we arrived, it was shocking to see how many babies were actually there. Um, and it did surprise me how much they trusted us with the babies. They sort of just handed us them and just sat down, had Quite a few hours it went really fast because I think we all enjoyed it just hearing their stories why they were there which some of them are actually quite sad um, but just to see all of the babies was crazy we saw lots of people there and everyone was just so excited to see us because we were white and it was different but these babies we they just wanted someone to hold and love for an hour and it was just nice to just love them for an hour. We were actually so moved by the amount of work they put in for these children. We as a team decided to donate quite a bit of money towards the orphanage. After we'd finished at the orphanage we went to Lake Tanganyika. Uh, this was the final part of our trip and it was just beautiful. We stayed at Jakobsen's beach house for two days and this was a fantastic opportunity for us as a team to rest um, and to reflect on everything that we'd seen and everything that we'd done. The, the main thing that came out of our conversations that we had was how much people valued the the relationships that they had built um, whilst they'd been out there. So many of the students and the teachers said they wanted to stay in touch with people, that they wanted to encourage people, that they'd learnt loads from the experience. And this was the whole point of our visit. We weren't interested in building a physical building or anything like that. We were there to get to know these people and to really build relationships with them. And our time on the beach just meant that we were able to look back and realise that we had done exactly that. So what have we learned from our time in Tanzania? We learned that friendships can be found in the most unlikeliest of places. We learned that actually the world is quite actually a small place. And no matter what the language or the culture, you can find a way to communicate and share. 
We learnt that it's about small acts of kindness done with great amounts of love that make the difference. And we learnt that it is our ardent wish that in all we do, that we should look for the face of God in everyone. <laughs>